There was a time when the world was so young. But even then, there was light. There are a few fictional universes that come with greater legacies in the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. So how do you adapt his iconic stories again for a TV series? If you're showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, you kind of don't. Prime Video's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is a unique take, telling something of its own story using a distant time period of lore that Tolkien mostly laid out in broad strokes. It's a bold approach, and here, Fortune has favored it. The two-episode premiere marks a strong start, with breathtaking cinematography, excellent acting, and a story that, after a somewhat labored setup, shows some serious promise and intrigue. For all that's been written about the Rings of Power, one of the most interesting immediate takeaways is how strongly it makes the case for the multi-episode debut format. It's not that the first episode is bad, it's not, but it spends far too much time on exposition telling us where we find Middle-earth here in the Second Age. After the first episode, despite how beautiful it all was, I had some concern that the Rings of Power would become mired in its explanations of the world instead of showing it to us, immersing us in it. The second episode, however, left those fears in the dust. Put up your sword. With the setup out of the way, it's able to plunge us into this world, its relationships, and even play with some of the kind of humor and banter that's so beloved in The Lord of the Rings. It helps that the second episode introduces us to the Rings of Power's take on dwarves, specifically husband and wife Prince Durin IV and Disa, and Owain Arthur and Sophia Nanvete have the warm, lovely chemistry of the sweetest of long-married couples. Going back to that telling instead of showing complaint about the first episode, episode 2 does an excellent job of showing us a friendship between Durin and elven Lord Elrond that hints at a long and complicated history, one that I immediately wanted to know more about. But we're not just here for the dwarves and elves. The Harfoots are incredibly charming as well, especially Markella Cavanaugh as the curious and kind-hearted Nori. The Harfoot storyline is also where Rings of Power's first big mystery, that concerning Daniel Wayman's mysterious character, referred to only as the Stranger in the credits, is able to start dropping breadcrumbs. If you heard of him, lad, if you heard of Sauron. While it starts slow, the forbidden romance between human healer and mother Bronwyn and Sylvan elf Erendir adds an extra layer of emotion and is a nice callback to some of the famous human-elf relationships we've seen before. But even with this absolutely massive ensemble, it's key that the portrayal of Galadriel works, as she'll essentially be one of our anchors across Rings of Power's planned five seasons. Luckily, Morvith Clark is an instant star. Even in warrior mode, she seemingly effortlessly channels that ethereal elven energy, but not so much that you don't root for her when she's arguing with Rob Arameo's endlessly charismatic Elrond. You have not seen what I've seen. I have seen my share. You have not seen. Through it all, both episodes never cease to be an absolute technical feast in the camera work, sets, costumes, and music. What's stunning about the cinematography isn't just how meticulously it captures the diverse geography of Middle-earth, but how it so intimately zeroes in on the actors' faces during important conversations. The same can be said for Bear McCreary's sweeping score, as admirable in its loud, epic, adventure-filled moments as it is in those aforementioned quieter ones. Speaking of adventure, there is a good amount of action in these first two episodes, and it's where I grew to really appreciate Rings of Power's use of practical effects. The few beasts here that we see look fantastic, and at times, suitably scary. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is telling its own story using the lore of Tolkien as a foundation, and the first two episodes make a solid case for why that story deserves to be told with such extravagance. While the first episode gets a little too caught up in exposition, the second is able to build on the characters and their relationships much more naturally, setting in motion a few intriguing subplots and a respectable amount of action. Through it all, it's always well acted by its ensemble cast and gorgeously shot and produced, with cinematography, effects, costumes, and original music that rival the biggest of big budget movies. For more on the Rings of Power, watch the cast break down who's who in their cast. And for everything else, stick with IGN.